I never really realized how much went into wedding planning and being a bride until I had my second job, well, big girl job, out of high school job <laughs> at David's Bridal. And with my own wedding anniversary, five years, yay, just passing, it got me thinking about the perfume that I wore on the big day, which was Honey Mori Butterfly. Still love it to this day. And just all the bridal styles that there are. So I thought it would be fun to give some spring and summer picks for some bridal perfumes based off of bridal styles. Now, very obvious disclaimer, wear what you want, do what you want. I'm one of those people where I am a firm believer in, forget a season, I'm gonna wear the heavy vanilla gourmand in the summertime. I'm inside in AC 97% of the time anyway, so does it really matter? But like I said, this is just a little bit for fun. This is something out there, this is just something for fun. So if you agree with my choices, great. If not, well, tell me what you'd recommend in the comment below. And of course, these are not my end all be all. I could go on and on, but I really only wanted to pick one for each category. So this video wasn't 20,000 hours long. And I realize I'm talking and I haven't even introduced myself. My name is Erin. I have been a fragrance collector for about two years now, going on three. I run a Facebook group called Save by the Smell. Yada, 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 let's get into the fragrances. So I'll be doing spring and summer together because by the time I'm filming this, it's the end of April, we're getting into May, then June will be here. So we just gonna mix them up together, okay? Okay. So first bridal style is romantic. On bride.com, it is described as something that is whimsical, soft, and feminine. Think the intricate details like lace, chiffon, tulle, these light, flowy, airy, fluffy materials. So thinking of that, the first thing that came to my mind for that kind of scent for spring was from the House of Beau, Bon Bon. Now, when I first got my nose on this, and I got it because it was supposed to be a floral gourmand, and I will admit right off the bat, I feel like it's definitely more floral than gourmand. It is very, very, like if you love Lily of the Valley, like the delicateness and the softness of that flower, this is for you. You get that and it's just, I, wanna, I don't wanna say like full glory because I feel like that makes it sound bolder than it is because this is like when I first smelled this, the first thing that came to my mind was delicate. And not in that the fragrance is a weak performer, but just that it is so soft. Like this is the kind of fragrance that I picture that bride who is in her soft. This is the kind of fragrance that I picture that bride who is in that beautiful satin mermaid gown with the tulle bottom, gently adorned pearls across her neck and pearl drop earrings. Like there's just this air of softness that came about when I smelled this fragrance. And I just felt like romantic was the first word that came to mind. So duh, it's going with the romantic bridal style. Now for summertime, I had a bit of a hard time making up my mind on a lot of these, primarily because I've realized that my collection is, well, and I knew this, it's very heavy. Like, it's a lot of gourmands. There's some ouds back there, some heavy tonkas. I'm like, crap, I don't do this whole light scent thing very well. So actually this whole video was a little bit of a struggle, but I did manage to make up my mind with Pink Me Up by Atelier de Ors. One look at the bottle. Like that is stunning. Like this is just, oh my goodness. Like the thought of this in somebody's bridal photo shoot. Like I, 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 I it, it's just giving beauty. It's giving romance like this. When I first sprayed this, I was at, I was visiting the Lucky Scent Boutique in NYC and it was my first time there. I didn't buy it while I was there because I may, I need to spray it and wear it around. And when I first sprayed it, I'm like, okay, this is fun. Like, this is the kind of thing that you wear at a party. It's a little effervescent and not like a loud party, but like a gala, casual, not, mm, I, you can't say gala and casual get together. Those two things don't go together. But like, we'll say romantic gala, like, you know what, beauty and the beast. Bell walking down those steps. This is such a beautiful raspberry with an effervescent champagne. It's just so, so lovely. And in summertime, I just think this would absolutely sing as a bride's choice. Next up was the classic or traditional bride. And this was the bride that 
whatever you have them in this pit this photo that you are taking and when they see it in the next 50 years it's timeless nothing about this wedding or this serum like no I don't want to say nothing about it will be actually no that's pretty accurate nothing about it is going to be trendy it's all going to be very like what's in style now has what has been in style what's worked has worked and if it's one of those if it ain't broke don't fix it kind of situations you're not going to find them on like the heavy blinged out bodices or you know whatever the latest bridal trends are because that's not who they are they just want that classic elegance that comes with the bridal territory nothing wrong with that now for spring I feel like doing classic and not picking anything from Guerlain was going to be a crime in itself. So I picked Angelique Noir as my spring traditional pick. But Angelique Noir, I want to say next year because I came out in 2005 originally. So next year it'll be 20. I feel like it was wonderful 20 years ago. It's wonderful now. It'll be wonderful 20 years from now. This will be one of this is one of those fragrances that I feel like it's not trendy. Like for example, a lot of people are, consider gourmands to be what's in for now. It's what's popular for now. Pistachio fragrances, they blew up last summer or well last year, I feel like. They weren't a thing before, it was the trend to do it. Nothing wrong with that, I have a couple. I love pistachio scents. But I know that it's not what's going to be in this year or next year, it was in for the moment. This though, this is something that will be in from now until probably long after I'm gone. Chanel, like a Chanel number five, if you will. I think that it is a beautiful green vanilla. It's not too gourmand, it's not too smoky, it's not too woody. It's just the perfect balance of a vanilla that I feel like is wearable amongst so many different types of people. It's a no-brainer. Now my summer pick is actually something new that I just got. This is Not Telling by Tamine Thameen. It's my first bottle from them. I don't know. Please excuse me. It's a Harris exclusive. And I wanted this as my summer pick because I feel like it is a beautiful, beautiful citrus and coconut water composition. I, I'm not a coconut girl. It gives me a headache if it's too strong. Um, and a lot of it smells like oil sheen slash blue magic to me. So is not my kind of note, but coconut water works. Now this I feel like is just, it gives that almost tropical citrus with the mandarin, the peach and the coconut water at its opening. And then as we journey on, we get tuberose and I love tuberose, but tuberose and ylang ylang. Then we get down to that vanilla and that sandalwood. I just feel like this is the kind of fragrance where the note composition is something that it's one of those things that works. I just feel like this is something that is a very easy wear for now and will be a very easy wear slash pick 50 years from now for somebody who wants something that is summertime fun in a way, but not super bold, super electric, super trendy. It just marks off all the right boxes. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. So I hope y'all get what I'm trying to say. Just know that I think that it has the potential to be a beautiful, classic citrus going into that floral category situation. Just, just we'll see in 50 years. Come back in 50 years and tell me if I'm right or not. That's all I got. Now next is the boho territory and our well style. And boho is described as, I feel like people like to think like macrame and flower crowns, but that's not always it, right? Boho bridal style can also be defined as something that is effortless, carefree, like you do what you want. It's a lot of A-lines a lot of times, so it's nothing frilly or fussy, like it's just a, it, it's a vibe, it's a carefree vibe. So for me, for springtime, I picked Butterfly Mind, oh come on, you won't focus? I picked Butterfly Mind, State of Mind, and this is hands down my favorite cherry blossom scent. I think that this is stunning. Like, also look at the bottle. Look at the bottle. Look at the bottom. It don't want to show. Okay, there we go. I say don't want to show you the bottom, but just nothing is more carefree than a butterfly. Okay, you go what you want. You go where you want. You do what you want. You flutter away in the wind. Like, 
And this scent to me is just, I feel like it just encaptures that carefree, almost airiness that comes with the boho vibe. You feel me? My summertime pick is gonna be Gentle Shower from Aloria. Aloria? You know, well, I'm trying over here, okay? And I wanna say this is a part of the Forgotten Words collection and the Korean word for this, I'll put up here but it is the unexpected rainfall that allows the harvesters to rest and which I think is just really really pretty it goes with the name and I feel like that unexpectedness that whatever happens happens that we're kind of going with the flow we are just kind of carefree we're moving through it also goes with that boho theme for me, this is the perfect blend of something that is going to be kind of uplifting, bright and energizing with that ginger and bergamot in the opening. But then we get a little bit more grounded and earthy once we get to that base of that vetiver and that oak moss. I'm so glad. I got this when I went to New York. I was just walking in there with the boutique. I love this scent. Like it's the one true freshie in my collection, I feel like. And it, it just deserved a place on the list. It, it really, truly did. Next, we have the Modern Bride, which is someone that is sleek, sophisticated, and cool with this particular style. Now, and I'm scrolling down to read, who said this? One of the editors? I think so, oh yeah. Her words proposed, whether you wear your hair up or down, slick it back into a chic and sophisticated style, keep your makeup fresh with clean skin, lots of mascara, and a bold lip. For me, these are the fragrances that I feel like would go perfectly with that. So for springtime, for springtime, a match made in heaven by Sorcelli celery apothecary. <laughs> this has been, I missed the first batch of this. I am feel so blessed that I managed to get on the second batch because I know that there's a wait list now. This is the perfect one, well for me, the perfect matcha scent because there are some gourmand elements with that ice cream in there. It's okay, like I think that this is one of those things that is bold enough to stand on its own like a red lipstick a red lipstick i tell people all the time a red lipstick can be a statement in itself you don't have if you wear other makeup with it great but you don't have to a red lipstick that you can wear to a formal event in your best gown or you can wear it with a white t-shirt and some jeans i feel like this is the same way you can dress it up or dress it down how you want to and that versatile that versatility of it i feel like makes it the perfect or a perfect springtime scent for the modern bride because we are doing a lot of things at one time i'm just saying my summer pick exalté by Fumé monet 100 percent because i feel like for me this is the modern rose this is a 2000s rose 2020s rose done right because i feel like a lot of times when or at least i know for me when i was getting into actually no not even when i was getting into perfume when i was younger a lot of rose perfumes felt perfumey. Like it was that kind of episode of SpongeBob where they're trying to run through the perfume department and they're getting sprayed. Like that was kind of the feeling slash envisionment of what rose perfumes were to me at that point in my life. Um, and well before I got into this journey. And even to this day, I still don't have a lot of rose perfumes, but I think that this does rose so beautifully in such a and i say in, in a modern way because of the way that it mixes with the vanilla um and just everything else that it encompasses like this is a power scent to me like i like to wear this when i'm feeling bold and confident and on my best days and i wear my wedding perfume when for my anniversary for my wedding anniversary every year but for my dating anniversary last year and this year <laughs> I wore Exalté. Like she's just that, it's, it gives those vibes for me. Like it's still a special occasion, it's still bridal. Like I love her, I think she's great. And I know that the size isn't available anymore so don't be mad at me because I wanna say it's in a smaller bottle now but um, I'm gonna cherish what I got. Next up is the Glamorous Bride and I feel like this is kinda where I fell in a little bit. I don't know, bride.com was like, this dry bride loves drama from dramatic silhouettes to sparkly bodices to feathers to lace like just i don't know i'm a theatrical romantic for my kibby take that and do with it what you will okay 
but for my springtime glamour perfume pick from royal crown isabella okay i mean one look at the bottle i know one of y'all is gonna be like it's hepto baseball pink i do not care okay this is such a beautiful tuberose scent back to i love tuberose if you're a tuberose hater go ahead and fast forward by like a minute okay i don't i don't care okay this is so energizing and bubbly and i just feel like it is so perfect for that bride who wants to be a little glam a little dramatic on her big day and i just look at it it's got a giant sparkly if it wants to it's got a giant sparkly top come on man come on come on and i feel like this is just so captivating like i get so many compliments whenever i wear this and not granted i am an oversprayer but you know whatever just she's there she is there for the dramatic girls okay now for the summertime dramatic brides oh macro oasis what i claude dear he got my number with this one he he pulled he pulled my like if i got married again well no i'm not getting married again for my vow renewal this will probably be in the rotation probably more than likely okay narco oasis when i first sprayed this i'm like this is what i would wear on the beach being fed grapes by someone's son or daughter like it's just like get like give it to me like i want to be the main like it gives main character energy and for a summertime bride there is something like main character energy okay like the like I, just, I i i love it so much and i feel like you can obviously tell this is my category because there's the excitement that i have around these two particular scents but um like this for the tropical sweet loving fruity vanilla it just it's all the things like why do i have to pick i can just be all of the things that's what this is okay that's what this is in a bottle and that's why the glam girls guys and everybody else okay like the dramatic ones we're here for it because it gives us all of our options. We don't have to pick. And last but not least is the non-traditional slash the edgy bride. You're wearing a black dress. You're wearing a red dress. You want to have lightsabers at your wedding. Oh, this is also kind of me. I did have a whole Sailor Moon themed bridal party and a Kingdom Hearts cake topper. Okay, you know, I'm a mix of glam and non-traditional, whatever. Anyway, so this category is for just the not your typical bride. And I feel like every bride is, you know, different from one another, but not every bride is gonna walk out and represent their fandom on their wedding day. It is what it is. So for spring, and I only have a sample of it and I'll like, it's not focusing at all, but it's called White Rabbit by D. Grey Eye. I don't know how exactly you are supposed to pronounce this brand's name. I just got the sample set in for some stuff that I ordered, um, but it's called White Rabbit. And I, it, it, it ha I, I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I do, but it is so beautiful. Okay, so this fragrance had notes of, and I gotta read it off, milk candy, white pepper, carrot, tuberose, fried paper, pandan, hay, bunny fluff, and white musk. What? <laughs> like, it was just so, and this wasn't the most, uh, I, I've never seen bunny fluff as a note. And this particular house also has things that have uh, catnip in them and a review on that later but i just i fell in love with this one it was just so like soft and pretty and just i don't know the thought of telling someone that your wedding perfume contains bunny fluff in it and rice paper um i don't know it's, it seems like a pretty non-traditional thing to do <laughs> uh yeah also, this is also one of the very few lactonic scents that I like. I'm not normally a big fan of anything lactonic, but this, highly enjoyable, very creamy, very relaxing. Definitely will be getting a full bottle. And last but not least to bring us home, we have Soradora Mallow, which I've never thought I would want to say that I smell like a sexy grape nerd with some violet and a touch of marshmallow. But here I am wanting to smell like a sexy grape nerd with a touch of violet and marshmallow. And I just feel like that is the most, who, I do not see, like the con, the thought, 
the thought of a traditional bride wanting to spray ma like I feel like she would just be like what the heck right well I feel like even a, a normal person would be like what are you talking about I'm not saying those of us who like mallow are abnormal but I don't know when I get told when I tell people I like gourmands or even before we get that far in a conversation like well why do I want to smell like a 12 year old why confectionery goodness is only why only 12 why do only 12 year olds get to smell that way why can I, why, why not I the 31 year old adult why can't I smell like a delicious baked good or in this case a sexy grape nerd with a touch of violet and marshmallow hmm? like I just feel like this is a very non-conventional bridal pick but I would definitely love to see it in somebody's bridal pictures like that would make my life like like here you are Here's your veil, and in the middle of it, mallow, and some just purple nerds just around for ambiance sake. You know what, if you don't make yourself laugh, who else can make <laughs> No one else can, okay? Anyway, so, but yeah, that concludes the perfumes that I would put for each particular bridal style. Now, are there more? Absolutely, of course. These are just the first things, like, the first things that came to my mind. Now, I am sure you have different opinions. So please share them with me down in the comments below. I, I just want to know what you would pair with what. And that aside, that's all I got for y'all. I will see you in the next video because I'm going to try to upload consistently. I have not done long form content in quite a while. So um, this will be a new adventure, we'll say. But all right, talk to y'all later. Bye.